Ladies and gentlemen, DTAX fans, hello and warm welcome to our next live webinar here at DTAX in our uh, DTAX Academy. Today um, with our special guest, Stefan Weiss. Um, so from Aziga, he can show and he will show us some tips and tricks for the brand new process to make the surface directly after printing smooth or during the printing process smooth. Um, we will show you, he will show you the composer situation and later I will show you the printing and finishing process. Stefan, thank you that you are here with us today. Um, could you please introduce yourself? Hi, thanks Marcus. Um, hi everyone, nice to be here. I'm Stefan, Aziga's Global Technology Manager and I'm taking care of our material partnerships and research and development. And um, one of those developments I would like to present today. And we are always focusing on making the customer's life easier with our technology. So we are trying to reduce post-processing to a minimum by increasing the quality of the parts that come out of the printer. And we know that lacquering, polishing, supports, those things are always a pain point for manual uh, labor, manual post-processing, time intensive, and so on. And we want to help you to reduce those manual steps to a minimum, um, maybe help you achieve products right off the printer that can either be used without finishing or with automated finishing that gives you more time for more valuable um, parts of the process. And I hope you're as excited as we are. So we're going to show you this patent pending high gloss um, build trace as a technology and some composer tips and tricks to make the most out of it. And I'm going to start directly with uh, Composer, our software. You can see that I've already prepared a, um, a little build, a little print job, and I've added three hearing aid molds. These are classical molds with, uh, or let's say molds with a classic cone support. We have different support strategies. This is the classic one, you can use it. You will have one point, which you definitely still will, will have to finish, but the rest um, comes out already pretty nicely. You can try to reduce this manual finishing point by using a lot of very, very thin pinpoint supports which then could be removed by an automated uh, tumbling um, step. But I think that would go a little bit too far here. So let's, let's see how we can optimize this, um, this setup. And I'm gonna show you uh, a nice feature in our software, which is called the multi-range feature. And excuse this setup, we are going here, always switch on your antalyzing for the best optical effects of your surface. You're encouraged to use fast print and separation detection to speed up your print. Click on next. And as you can see, I've started with 50 micron. Uh, that would be recommended to get the, the nicest surface for, uh, for this new technology finish, high transparency, high um, surface quality, low amount of of steps to finish um, because if your layers are too thick the automated polishing might not be able to smooth it so use reduced layer sizes for uh, surfaces that are easy to reach in your automated tumbling step and you will not have to polish them manually but obviously reducing the um, layer size will give you a higher printing time. So I'm going to show you a trick how to reduce printing time by using multi-range. So multi-range means you're allowed to set different settings. Let's reduce this different settings for different areas. So we're going to start with a, with a, um, with speeding up the cone support, right? So Let's go here where only, only a cone is printed. The cone really doesn't need any high resolution. It's just there to support your part. So we're gonna speed it up by printing it at 200 micron layers. Now, 
you have a you have a portion of the model which is usually a critical critical portion uh, also for the lifetime of your build tray so this is something i show you to increase the build tray lifetime by just taking this little portion where the cone enters your your object and we're going to open this reduce the power here to 1 milliwatt or to let's say to 2 milliwatt which is going to increase it a little bit but as these are only 17 layers this should be fine this will this will reduce the separation forces of this part tremendously your your tray will will thank you and um, after that we can speed it up again and uh, if you use this slider you can see that up to here we have we have only surfaces that are um, growing to one side so we can increase the layer thickness here again up to what did i use let's say 10 and from there we go to 50 to have a nice surface finish for this if you had only parts like this like this one and this one you could increase this range even further um, once you start having these very shallow slopes you want to go down with the layer thickness so that your automated polishing can reduce the small stair steps you will have and by that we we have reduced the um, the time number one and the stress on your build tray and we will receive a part that already looks pretty amazing and can be finished by an automated tumbler, uh, tumbler step in the end. Yeah. Okay. So thanks for listening. Thanks. This. Uh, that, well, this was, so if I understand you correctly, um, you we will produce in future with 50 micron layer steps to make that the surface is smooth. Um, that that we don't lose so much time, let me say, we can produce a cone support in 100 micron layer steps, and you showed us how it works in the Composer software. Yes, so the idea is using um, different layer thicknesses to speed up your process where it's, where it's possible without losing surface quality, and to reduce the layer thickness to increase the surface quality where it really is necessary. And if you would go into the details, it's basically dependent on your angle, but maybe that's a bit too complex. Um, we can provide further information um, for a download where we can explain you exactly how to really optimize it up to the, the perfect, perfect level. The idea is basically we use thick layers where, where possible and thin layers where necessary to achieve a total surface finish in the least amount of time which then enables you to just go into a post-processing step that is an automated templar and possibly doesn't require any manual finishing or the least amount of manual finishing, which I think is the most valuable part in your time um, when you produce audio parts. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So uh, we talked about before the webinar, we started the print shop. I will show you now, it must be ready. We talked about before also um, the finishing process is 100 percent the same as you know so that means let me show you the process that's what you know um, in details um, you can see it in the last webinar from us with the cuckoo material as sample um, so i gave you there some more um, details about the process you can take out the platform of the printer now you lose the uh, objects from the platform, um, use a spectrula, I use a little hammer, it's much more easier for me, but um, it's also possible to use it with a knife or something like that. Um, after losing, you can take it to the isopropanol bath. So this is, a, I marked it with A, with, with the, um, yes, A, it's the first bath for washing in isopropanol alcohol. Inside of the ultrasonic bath, here is um, some water inside. Um, take the objects inside into the ultrasonic bath. The first step is for three minutes. 
After um, the three minutes, please blow it up as compressed air. Make sure that the channels are completely free um, of rest from the rest of the material. And then use the next box um, with washing process B. Um, it's the same, um, take it into the ultrasonic bath and after that um, for three minutes, blow it up with uh, compressed air. And then when it's dry, you can take it in the auto flash sample two times for 2,000 flashes. And um, that's the process after printing the first steps. Let me show you the differences between the regular process and also the, um, the new process. So as you can see here, this is an, the final object after printing, washing and curing. The surface is matte. This object here is high-end polished. So that means after washing and curing, um, the support is cut away and also it is uh, taken to the tumbling machine. As you can see here, this is what I will show you later, uh, what we talk about later once more again, is the channel, the venting and also the tube channel. It is inside, it is matte because it is only possible to uh, polish it outside. This object here is made by the new process. It is only washed and cured, that's it. Um, this is the other sample who is polished for, as I know, two, two hours in the polishing machine, in the tumbling machine. So you can see on the surface nearly no differences between. But the big benefit of the process here is um, it is also inside. So that means um, inside of the rig molds, inside of the um, ITE shells and inside of the uh, molds, the venting and also the, the, the tube hole is also smooth and uh, not matte. And this is a big, big benefit. As you know, from your production, it is not so easy to make sure the transparent mold will be completely transparent also inside. And for the um, ITE shells sample, um, it is also after curing directly good. So good to use, let me say. Stefan, some more for adding um, to say now, okay, we need to talk about some other topics. If not, we can also switch to the, to the live chat, if you like. Mm, I think you, you summarized it pretty well. And maybe I can just add, we, we don't promise any magic here. We just think we have understood your pain points in processing. And we know that... Um, it's not about speed of printing because you still, if you produce more, you still have to finish them with the same amount of labor. So we think it's more important to um, produce parts that require less post-processing. And in this regard, our high gloss technology helps, the multi-range can help, um, the support techniques can help. Um, and we are, we are there for you to actually um, support you if you have more detailed questions in how to uh, apply these technologies in your workflow to get you to a fully automated post-processing workflow. Um, yeah, to just help you to use your time to better, um, to, to better means than manually grinding, lacquering, and so on. Okay, so let us switch to the, um, to the live chat. Let me have a look inside of the chat oh, we have a lot of questions the first one is um, is there anything needed to make changes in the ini file in the composer software um, is there something to do good question we try to make it as user friendly as possible so um, you just have to use our new build tray uh, you don't need any expensive upgrade to the printer uh, the printer will recognize the new build tray and adjust anything that requires adjustment on a hardware firmware side by itself. And all you do is maybe work on your composer workflow to make the full, um, the full use of the new technology to get the most benefit out of it. And we have resources for you to, to uh, increase your knowledge about how to use this technology to the best of your workflow. And we can also help you to do this. 
but there's no new printer necessary, no um, upgrade to the printer itself. It will be just a new consumable, which you would buy anyway. It's just a build tray that will help you get these results that we have seen. Okay, so that means it is it is totally easy. You don't need to make any changes in the composer. You don't make to any changes on the firmware printer. Only another tray, and the tray will will be um, connected to the printer automatically. That the printer knows what is needed to do. Exactly. So Perfect. you Sounds you good. add the new build tray. There's a chip communicating to the printer that it's the new build tray, and the software will automatically recognize it and tell the printer how to use this new build tray to achieve what you want. Okay, so the next question is from Tom here. Ah, what kind of material is usable? So um, you can use, of course, all the all our materials, medical print, looks print, and the brand new no break material will also work fine in the process here. Um, yeah, that's that's it. Do we have some? Oh, we have a lot of some more questions here um, in the live chat. So our back office team and also the support team will give you all the answers you need. Um, it's also possible to send us an email, um, and we will give you the answer later um, for all your questions. Thank you for your time, Stefan. Thank you for your time. It was a pleasure to be to work with you here on the live uh, webinar. Um, uh, let us plan the next live webinar for for some other details and process um, themes. Thank you very much for your time and we will talk to you soon and see you later. Mm -hmm.